Glad to have you here with this morning. And if you are a guest, you're here with us today on an amazing day. And that second reason is this, because this morning we're going to talk about one of our core values as a church. So this is what I encourage you to do. Go ahead and take out your Bibles and open up to the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Or maybe you're one of those new technology folks that you have your Apple or you have your Android mobile device and you have your favorite Bible app. You can go ahead and as well join us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Also, take out these Bible study outlines that we provided for you. Or maybe you are more technologically oriented than somebody else. We have this up on our Facebook page page joining us with our live stream this morning so you can follow along and take notes as we study God's word together this morning. Now what we're going to talk about today this morning is the real church, the true church, the church that God has designed for us to experience because I believe that a lot of us we've really never experienced real church. We haven't experienced true church. And the reason why is that a lot of us have a, a lot of general misconceptions about the church. Some people think, you know, Jonathan, the church is just a building. It's not. Or the church of Christ is just another denomination. It's not. Or maybe you think that the church is just one in a long list of religious organizations. It's not. The church is people. It's you. You are the church. And something happens along the way that we get disconnected. And we're not really functioning like we are supposed to as a church. And that's what we're going to discover here this morning. As we read together in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul writes to this church that good folks, it's really messed up, right? I mean, this church is made up of some carnal Christians. They're involved in sexual immorality. There are disputes among each other. And they're even taking it so far that some of them are literally suing one another. Now, you would agree that this is a messed up church, right? Yet the Apostle Paul says, I'm going to show you what a true church looks like. And he spends an entire chapter, chapter 12, saying this is how the church is really supposed to function and what it's really supposed to look like. So today we're going to talk about the church. Now, I don't know about you, but let me tell you something about Jonathan Sanford. I love the church. I do. And the fact is, I love the church because it is through the church that I came to know Jesus Christ. And it's also through the church that I came to know you as my brothers and sisters. But let me tell you something this morning. One of the biggest reasons why I love the church is because of this simple fact. Listen carefully. It is the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and it is the hope for this lost and broken world that's all around us. Now when the church operates, when the church functions the way it is supposed to do, it is incredibly powerful in our world. So what exactly is the church? What exactly is the church? Now at the top of your outline I put these five things, these five images that are found in the New Testament that describe the church of our Lord. Well, what are they? First, the Bible says, and you might jot this down there at the top of your outline, the church is the temple of God. That means that whenever all of us, as children of God, meet together for the purpose of worshiping God, we know one thing for certain, that His presence is with us. And we are, we are, not the building is the temple, but we are, both individually and collectively, the temple of God. The second description that we have of the church is we're also called the army of God. We are soldiers of the cross. 
We are fighting for Christ's kingdom, fighting for his will to continue to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. You remember that from the Lord's Prayer, right? But the next image, which I absolutely love, is we are called the bride of Christ. And folks, that speaks to the intimacy of a love relationship that you can have with the Almighty God. And we are keeping ourselves pure, unspotted for the bridegroom. A fourth description of the church in the Bible, it says that we are the family of God. Every one of us are adopted who are born through Jesus Christ. We have this ability to be part of God's family. God is our father. Jesus is our elder brother. And you and I are brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. All right, that's the first four images. But the fifth image is the image that the Apostle Paul uses more than any other imagery to describe the church. And what is it? He says that we are the body of Jesus Christ. Folks, look at it this way. If you've never thought of it this way, I hope that you will think of it this way. We are the hands... We are the feet of Jesus Christ, the body of Jesus Christ. And folks, when we function like a true body, it is amazing what the church can accomplish. Now, the Apostle Paul is saying to us this morning, look at this picture. If you can consider your body physically, and every one of us, we live in our body. We know our good things and our bad things. But if you know how your body is supposed to function, if you can comprehend how it functions properly, then that's the way the church is supposed to operate. <coughs> so this morning, I'm going to give you a picture of what true church is supposed to look like. And what real body life is supposed to look like in the church. But here's the deal. After I've laid it all out for you. After I've laid it all on the table. You and I still have a choice to make. And there's going to be three choices that I'm going to ask you. Who are here in this room or those who are watching on our live stream. Who are part of our brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm going to ask you to make three choices with me this morning. And if every one of us in this room make those three choices. I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart. This church, the Waters Road Church of Christ. Will be the most remarkable place on this planet. Well Jonathan, I, I like what I'm hearing. But uh, wait a second. How do we do that? Well, this is what I want you to do. First, let's look at what it means to be part of the body of Christ. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to jot this down on your outline. The first thing that we are going to learn this morning is this. You, everybody take your finger like this and point right here. You are a member of the body. Did you know that you are spiritually a member of the body of Christ? And that's exactly what we read together in verse 12. What Paul was saying, in a sense, he said, hey, look at your physical body. It's made up of all these different members, right? You got your, your head, you got your eyes, you got your ears, you got your nose, you got your tongue, you got your lungs, you got your heart, you got your hands, you got your feet. He said your body is made up of all these different members. And yet it functions as one body. And Paul says that's the way it also is with Jesus Christ. I mean, he, it's like that old children's song that we all at some point have sang. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, right? The body of Christ, Paul says, is no different. It's made up of all these different members and yet we are one body. Now maybe you're sitting there this morning thinking, now how, how did that happen spiritually? How did I become a member of the body of Christ? Well, he gives us the answer in verse 13. And what does he say? He says, at the moment you put on Christ in baptism, something happened. 
The Spirit of God came to live inside of you and you spiritually became part of the body of Christ. That's right. At the moment, that very moment, by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, you became a part of the body of Christ and God's Holy Spirit came and took up residence inside of you. It reminds me of this dad. He was sitting down with his little boy and he was trying to explain this very idea and he said, Son, one day when you're baptized into Jesus Christ, this amazing thing happens that, that God made a promise that the Holy Spirit would come and, and take up residence in you. And the little boy says, No, Daddy. That, that doesn't sound right. Are you sure? Are you sure that this big, big Jesus can come live inside of little, little me? Dad says, yeah. Big, big Jesus is going to come live inside of little, little you. And the little boy had this puzzled look on his face. He said, but daddy, that just won't work. Because if this big, big Jesus comes and lives inside little, little me, he's going to stick out all over the place. Guess what? That's the way it ought to be. That's the way it ought to be. And, and, and Jesus should be sticking out all over the place. That's what Paul says is amazing. Because when you are spiritually reborn, you are placed inside of the body of Jesus Christ. And what's amazing is he says it does not matter what your religious background was. You could be a Jew. You could be a Greek. It doesn't matter what your social economic background or status may be. You could either be slave or you could be free. What does that mean though here in the year 2020 at Waters Road? Well, let me put it to you this way. You can either be a millionaire or you could be on welfare. But we are all equal at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. We're all the same in the body of Jesus Christ. And one of the things I love about Waters Road is that there's a lot of different folks here. A lot of different backgrounds. A lot of different social statuses. A different gender, race, culture, background. And the world looks at you as a church and says, I don't understand how can these folks have anything in common. Let me tell you at least one thing we've all got in common. Jesus Christ is our Lord. Amen. Folks, please hear me on what I'm about to tell you. Jesus Christ is bigger than your race. Jesus Christ is bigger than your gender. Jesus Christ is bigger than your social background. Jesus Christ is bigger than all the differences that we may have in this room. Jesus is bigger. And when you make Jesus Christ the biggest thing in your life, all these walls that we see being built in our society, they all come tumbling down. Because that's what the body of Christ is supposed to look like. But folks, you've got to make a choice. What is that choice? Jot this down on your outline this morning. Every one of us must make a choice. You must choose to belong. <coughs> you've got to choose to belong. You see, the fact is... You may be spiritually part of the body of Christ, but every one of us have got to make it personal. Folks, this isn't just a matter of believing. The Christian life is a matter of belonging. You've got to choose to make yourself part of the church. Now, people come to me from time to time and they may say, Jonathan, I'm a Christian, but I don't really want to or feel the need to be part of a church. That's never made any sense to me. That's like coming up to me and you're a big strapping man and you say, I want to be an all-star football player, but I don't want to be on a football team. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Or the one that I've heard that, that probably hurts me 
is when folks say, Jonathan, trust me, I love Jesus Christ, but I do not like the church. So what you're telling me is that you don't like the bride of Jesus Christ. Stop speaking evil about the bride of Christ. Amen? If you're spiritually part of the bride of Christ, that's where the Bible says that spiritually you are part of the body of Christ and you must make a choice to belong to it. Folks, I believe this with all my heart. That it is God's will for every child of God to be actively part of a local church. That means that if you're not actively part of a local church, you are outside of God's will. There's no two ways around it. Folks, you are either actively a part of God's family or you're not. But here's something else that's been on my heart. And I pray it comes across in the loving way I'm trying to say this. There's something that's been happening in the Western church for many, many years now. And that is some of us have started to treat the church as if it's nothing more than just another country club that you can just come and be at every once in a while whenever you feel like it and then walk away for as long as you please and show back up and nobody ever questions it. Folks, if you are going to belong to the church, you will choose to faithfully belong to it. Am I right? Second thing he says about the body of Christ is this. Jot this down. You are an important part of the body. That's right. You are an important part of the body of Christ. I love how the Apostle Paul puts this. It's probably some of my favorite verses in all the Bible. And what the Apostle Paul says... He says, let's pretend. Isn't that crazy to think about? The Apostle Paul, writing to the Holy Spirit, says, hey, let's pretend. Let's pretend for just a second that our physical members of our body could speak to us. What would they say? By the way, you may not like what your physical members of your body might say about you, right? Paul says, let's just pretend that we can hear... From what? What's the first thing he says? Let's hear from the foot. What would the foot say? Well, look at verse 15. If the foot should say, Because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. Paul says, That would not make it any less part of the body. In your outline, I want you to circle, I do not belong. Now, we could sort of understand why the foot would feel this way, right? Think about it. Your poor feet, they're stuck in a sock. They're inside a shoe that's, you know, lacily tight. And it stinks down there. It's sweaty. And you're always walked on all the time. And nobody appreciates the feet. Has anybody ever walked up to you and said, Oh, wow. You have the most beautiful feet I've ever seen. And how many times in a board meeting has anybody said, all those in favor, raise your feet? <laughs> I mean, I can understand because the foot says in comparison to the hand, I am not an important part of the body. And Paul says, hey, it's no less part of the body. And Paul says, okay, we've heard from the foot how the foot feels. But before I go further... You know what, some of you this morning, maybe there's somebody here who feels like a pair of feet. And um, it's possible. But Paul says, all right, we've heard from the foot. Now let us hear from the ear. No pun intended, right? Verse 16, look at what Paul says. He says, if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body. Paul says, that would not make it any less part of the body. Now on your outline, once again, circle, I do not belong. Now again, I can sort of understand why the ear would feel this way. I can sort of understand it. What is it about our ears? Well, there's just this gristle that's growing out of the side of our head. 
And most of us don't even like our ears, right? I mean, when I was a kid growing up, you know about the red hair, but the other thing folks would say, you've got a big pair of ears. <laughs> and so what do we do? Well, we'll put jewelry on them, rings, just to try to make them look a little bit better. I don't do that personally, but I can understand why some do. And, and the ear says, hey, in comparison to the eye, this ain't fair. I mean, look at the eye. The eye has color, it has beauty, it has depth. I mean, even people say about the eye that the eye is the window to the soul. You don't ever hear anybody say about me, look in their ear, it's the window to their soul because all you see in me is earwax. <laughs> Maybe the ear says, compared to the eye, I'm just not important. But Paul says... Paul says, that doesn't make it any less important. What Paul's saying is that I know that there are some of you here today, and maybe you feel like a foot, or maybe you look like an ear, but you are still very important. In fact, I want you to do something for me this morning. I want you to look next to the person, the person next to you, and I want you to tell them, you are important. Do that for me. All right, Paul's saying you may not think you're important, and yet the Bible says you are a very important part of this church. And since you are an important part of the body, you've got a choice to make. You've got a choice to make. What is it? Jot this down in your outline. You need to choose to connect. Here's a simple reality check. We all have our defense mechanisms. We all put up a front, a face, a veneer. We like to keep people at arm's length. We may say, I'm going to join the church, but buddy, I'm not going to really connect with anybody else. Why? Because we don't want to be vulnerable with anybody. We don't want to take the time to get to know somebody. And you know what happens when we don't do that? <coughs> When we don't make the choice to connect, we never experience true church. Are you hearing me? I mean, folks, the only way that real church happens, it's not in this room. I mean, yes, what we do together here on a Sunday morning it is the penultimate experience of our communion together as God's family. I'm not taking anything away from that. And it's amazing what we do. But true church happens when we are connected to one another. You tell me, am I right or wrong? Folks, don't just attend. Don't just belong. Choose to connect. Here's the sad part. On average, in most congregations, half of our members are not truly connected. That's a fact in most places. What does that mean? That means that half of our congregation never really experiences what true church is like. So Paul says, okay, you know what? You've got to choose to belong. You're an important member. And you've got to choose to connect. But he says this next thing. Jot this down in your outline. He says, you are a needed member in the body of Christ. You are needed in the body of Christ. <coughs> Again, look at how the Apostle Paul says this. Verse 21. Again, he's still talking like the members of our body can somehow communicate to us. Verse 21. The I cannot say to the hand, I don't need you anymore. Right? I mean, think about it for just a moment. Can your eyes say to your hand, I don't need you anymore? Of course not. Because my eyes may look at that paper, but it's dependent upon my hand to pick it up. 
And our body, our physical body is designed by God to be interdependent. Our physical body, every member needs the other member. And folks, that's the way God designed the spiritual body of Jesus Christ. Folks, we need each other. Again, he continues this in verse 21. He says, Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. I mean, think of it this way. The head, can it say to the feet, Hey, feet, take a hike. Doesn't happen, right? Why, if there's somewhere the head wants to go, he requires the feet to take him there. And that's the whole point. Folks, we need each other. And folks, we need to remind each other of this point. In the church, we have so many people from time to time that walk out of these doors and feel that they are unneeded. I'm saying it with all of my heart this morning, regardless of who you are, you are needed at the Waters Road Church of Christ. Verse 22, Paul says, On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker, and we think that we don't need, they are indispensable. That's true of your physical body. You need every part of your body. And that's the same way with the body of Jesus Christ. And you know what saddens me this morning? It's the arrogance and the pride of so many Christians who say, I can do this on my own. I don't need a church. I don't need brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm strong enough. I am a lone ranger Christian. Can I tell you something? At the moment you isolate yourself away from your brothers and sisters in Christ and you sit at home and you don't make yourself part of the body of Christ, Satan's got you. The moment you isolate yourself, Satan's got you. We desperately need each other. So we need to connect, right? But we need to do this next thing. It's this. Jot this down. If you're really needed, then you know what we need from you? We need you to make a choice. We need you to choose to love. You need to choose to love. Because you know what? You can belong to a church... You can even connect in some fashion, but you've still got to make the choice. I'm going to open up my heart. I'm going to sacrifice a little bit of me, and, and I'm going to serve somebody else. And whenever you do that, whenever you choose to live in this way, folks, that's when you experience true church. Look at how Paul says this in verse 24. He says this, But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it. Now why? So that there be no division in the body. But listen to this. But that the members may have the same care for one another. Circle the words, same care care. Good folks, that's what we want to happen right here at the Waters Road Church of Christ. We want every single part of our body to feel like they experience the same care as someone else. We don't want some people feeling like, oh man, I get a lot of great love from my brothers and sisters in Christ. They care for me. And then somebody else is sitting over there thinking, I'm not sure anybody here really loves me. Folks, when we do that, when we really depend upon one another, that's when real unity will be maintained. You take me to any church that's ever gone through a split, and I will show you individuals that at some point decided they don't need each other. 
You take me to any marriage right now that is failing, that is falling apart, and I will show you at least one individual who says, I don't need them anymore. You see, whenever we start acting and living and operating independently, we no longer have unity. Now this morning, because of our time, I'm going to leave you to privately study verse 26. Why? Because verse 26 is the definition of what a true church should look like. This morning, I've asked you, and I've shared with you scripturally from God, what real body life is all about. What real church is all about. How the true church should operate. How God designed it. And that we can only fulfill that design, divine design when you are connected. So three choices that I'm asking you to make this morning. If you're a Christian. Maybe you've been attending Waters Road. You've been visiting. Maybe you've been visiting for weeks. Months. Or even years. If you're a Christian and we, you are a part of the spiritual body of Christ, it's time for you to belong. If you're not a member at Waters Road this morning, we are urging you to choose to belong. Now, maybe you've been a member here for 50 years. By the way, 50-year anniversary, right? Maybe you've been here for 50 years, but you've never truly made the choice to belong. Make that choice. Or maybe you're here this morning and you're not connected. Maybe you've got one friend. I'm telling you this morning, make the choice to connect. And third, since you're so important, so needed, so valued, and that we cannot be successful without one another, I'm asking you, will you start choosing to love? Last thing I'm going to say before we extend the invitation is this. If this morning, everyone who is present in this room, if everyone makes those three choices, I'm telling you, the Waters Road Church of Christ will be transformed. So what I'm doing right now I'm asking you, how many of you will help me make that happen? <coughs> how many of you, how many of you right now, right here, right now, will make the choice to belong? If you do, say amen. 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 How many of you are willing to make the choice to connect? Say amen. amen. And how many of you are willing to make the choice to love? Say amen. Amen. Now you've said that before your brother and sister in Christ and you have ultimately said it before our God. Scripture is pretty clear. Take no vow, right? Especially if you don't intend to keep it. We're about to sing this song of encouragement. Maybe you haven't made the choice to belong to the family of God. You're not a Christian this morning. And you want to put on Christ in baptism this morning. The opportunity is yours. Or maybe you have not been choosing to belong. You've been not choosing to connect. Or not choosing to love. And you need our brothers and sisters to pray with you. That whatever is holding you back would vanish. Whatever wall would be torn down. We're here for you. We're God's family. We can help you this morning. If you'd like to come publicly and let us pray with you, or maybe you want to visit with one of our shepherds or one of our ministry staff, if we can help you this morning, do not leave here without first making whatever you need to make right in your life with Jesus Christ. Let's stand and sing together.